time. 2.30 Express. Well, I'm finally back again. I got something new for you this time. That's uh, also something old. That uh, some of you will again remember growing up with. Mr. Pack, the, 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 the uh, packing slip, shipping receipt, whatever, in the little bag there on the outside. Yep. Let's see, they, unlike the 80s and 90s, they since stopped putting the picture of the rifle in the nice scene in the front and all that printing. I'm just going back to the plain box they used when I bought my 760 Power Master variant 1 back in 70. Oh goody. Got these good copper packing pack staples. Got a sticker on the outside though. Another warning is a parcel warning advertisement and potentia. Portuguese to you. Seventy seven W Crossman <laughs> Front sight, something's never changed save for that little piece of glow rod stuck in there. The usual rear sight. I see we went back to the two screws rather than the clips and tack welds, as with the earlier uh, models over there and some of the CO2s I got over here. Uh, Plain butt, butt, butt pad too, plate whatever. Doesn't say have the little circle thing with cone on it anymore. You press these two little buttons on them tabs right there, and the clip comes out. As you can hear, that thing clips in very snugly. Let me do that again for you. Okay, the thing that holds the rotary mag goes back on this end. You can feel that clicking in place, very solid plastic trigger, plastic trigger guard. 
this is all plastic up here, including where the scope goes, just like the pump masters. Barrel bands plastic. But look at the bluing on that barrel. And I ain't even cleaned it up yet. You know, it's light to shine in here, sorry. A little dark in here. Could he got here around 11 o'clock. Or maybe, maybe noon to one where the, the, the sun is either over here or arcs over here past the cottonwood and the big pen oak over here. You get more light coming more directly into the room and you got better light to uh, film with. So, it said this thing is 3.69 pounds. That's minus the scope I'm going to put on. And here is, that's, that's loose too. That's all the way down right there. It was unscrewed a few rounds. That's where you put the CO2. I think it's just like the Model 70. I think this one takes only one. Okay. A little more length. Of port. Probably use about two or three inches more length of pull. Two inches anyway. Length of pull is from here to here. Just so you know. You can measure that. You can see how high up I got my elbow and try to get down here. And when you line up the front side properly with the, with the V block in the back here, it fills that slot. So you don't have to be going like that and like, you know, like this trying to get that real skinny blade to line up with this big, big notch in the back. Somebody was doing their homework that time. Nice. Made it look like, uh, I would say black one. And if that's down, there's not a lot of grain to it. Probably beech wood. You know, beech nut. That's a hard one, too. That's a fat barrel on that thing. at the end and you'll see why. You see that insert? That's a barrel sleeve like the like the 66 AB Power Master on top over here. That's what the that's a that's a sleeve barrel. Steel soda straw barrel with a with the steel sleeve and the plastic thing in here that also holds the front sight. Sure does, you can see it too. I don't know which one comes out of where because I don't see the screws. Don't the screws. <laughs> anyway. Oops. Oops. Oh come on. So I'm gonna say that thing scope and all will weigh less in the 160 Pell gun up there, which uses the same Winchester uh, 4x32AO scope and uh, the alloy uh, Ron Robinson mount. That thing takes two CO2 cartridges. 1955 56 technology. I'm glad that that thing pressures up to 900 psi. Box is just a insert. I'm not surprised. But anyway, the excuse to clean the room up a little so I got a little more room to film in. All this stuff over here has to get cleared up so I can move things down around and get a lot more room back in here so I can, we can, I can sit back in front of my backdrop over here again. Sorry about that. Okay, now. I'm 
Oh, it's just a dull gun. I just can't get this room cleaned out. I can get the other rack on the wall, get all these guns out of the... They're just sitting around out of the gun book just so I can actually use it. Okay. That works. Okay. Scope goes right there, so I hope you can see that that's about the best I can do to set things up until the lazy bones upstairs get all hiney down here and help me finish tape gutting this room so I can put it back the way I want it. Anyway, Winchester 4x32AO scope. And as you can see right there, it'll focus down to 15 feet. And from 75, 100, 200, and 50 an hour Listen to that. You get one of these scope mount screws. I look I like on one side locked down too hard, the other one won't move either. As soon as you crack the torque off of it. Then, it's, then it'll be worse than it'll come out. Just need a, a bigger handle like that versus this one, which actually fits to get in there and get it off. Crack the torque off of it. Need them tight, but not so tight you can't get them back off again, folks. The good thing these screws have one, one slot longer than the other, for, you know, that other stranger looking kind of Phillips screw, so that it'll take a standard screwdriver if needs be. Messed up the bullet on it, but I don't really give a shit. I don't use these cheap cheap sight through mouths in I got a handful of these dumb things I can that's probably sell for five bucks a pair. Plus shipping if anybody wanted it. Or just charge. See how much it charges to ship them as light as I can get the package and then say charge six, seven bucks of air for it. So it's somebody that likes these see through mounts. Look what they're the ones made by Gamma. So they can 
Have them if they want them. If they need them, fine, I don't. I want to get the scopes line of sight as close to the bore center line as I can get it. Okay, anyway, in the Weaver, Weaver Classic Rimfire uh, scope mounts, mid-rise, one inch, and they're made for 22 and air gun. It's got the little one that says rimfire there is the is the dovetail mount. Got three or four of these little <laughs> little Allen, Allen wrenches already to fit these things. Don't tighten them so damn tight you destroy the damn screws trying to, to loosen them up. Almost couldn't crack the torque on the thing with the wound the wounds made to fit it. This one. Oh, I swear I can't tell. Damn far. Take too long to tighten it back up again. And again, same thing on that one. Interesting how I'm left handed, but I put the the mounting screw part of the mount on the right side. So much better. I mean, the little filth screws on those cheap gamma mouse. What a piece of crap. These weaver mounts are ground down kind of smooth on, on the cap. And a neater appearance. If you were sharp corners where you might grab it to cut your hands on. These cheap caps can cost up to like eight bucks, eight thirty-four, I think I saw. I was looking on Optics Planet for uh, they flip up scope caps. You know the flip up scope caps say to fit this end here as much as ninety-five and a quarter, and I maybe is ninety-seven dollars. Shit, I don't know, it was ninety-two and a quarter. It was like over ninety-two dollars. I'm gonna spend. I'm not gonna spend two hundred dollars on caps. For a forty-seven dollar scope, you know. Ooh. Well, I see now. Mm. 
I'm going to have to move that. Hmm. Get that. Get that. Get that. Get that. Get Above the, the seat there because that dog doing rear sight. And the buck and have to have both scope mounts almost on top of each other. We put the adjustment the adjuster. Oh, I'm so getting way watery eyed. I can't see. The air coming in the room makes it hard to see when you. Wearing glasses and your eyes are messed up. No. Just to get that thing right, I have to get too far back. My head's going to be almost straight up. So that's, that's going to be interesting. Things like a Model 70, you really need a really long bodied scope to get the darn thing in there. You know, to get the, the back, get the eyepiece of the scope back with at the right alignment for your eye and have the adjustment knob, knobs between the mounts. Which sure the hell ain't wanting to. Not the slightest. piece that's ex extended is usually high mounts. You can't get them in like medium and low. <coughs> Dang. Even got it adjusted pretty darn, you know, square back here to be nice and, and Clear and it's. Okay, let me show you the eye relief here. Oh, this here. Oh, I gotta clear this table out. I gotta put everything away to get. I can't get to the camera. Over there. Okay, anyway. 
You see what I mean? This sits on top of this and pulls 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 the thing off the bottom of the front cap by over an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths. So you need you need high mounts to get over top of that one. So it looks a little odd. But check out this eye relief. Perfect. happen to have the eyepiece set right for my new glasses. Oops. Okay, anyway. I could see the flowers clearly. I guess the wood fence at the, at the back of the neighbors right across the street by the other the next neighbor's fence. So I see the coons sneak around back there. Pack, 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 pack. That still feels like I can't wait till I get, a, get, get some more batteries for the. Uh, for the uh, scale, so it weighs. I swear that doesn't weigh more than four and a half, maybe four point six. It's only three point six nine pounds, even with the hardwood stock, minus the scope and mounts. But you get that on there, it's pretty. Uh, it's still pretty light. It's, it's real light, like like a 160, 167, 180, 187, uh, 140, roughly. The, the, the 50s. Uh, 50s and, and, and to mid 60s uh, Crossmans, the, the old wooden steel ones. Make sure I got the front sight straight up and down. And just the eye relief is perfect. So just like that. No bolt, no breach though. It's all internal. Okay, let's just sit down for a minute. It actually does look kind of cool, that big scope on it. Not real long, but it's 32 millimeter. Okay, anyway. I think that's a zip lock bag. I think so. um, I don't believe this. Now my doggone knife disappeared. What do I do with the knife? shot clip. And just to give you an idea of how thick that is, there's my index finger. Twelve shots. If you're testing with this thing, that's gonna be great. Instructions for a minute to see what the. Uh, where's the English one? Got a bunch of them printed separately in different languages. I don't even know Spanish and Portuguese and all that stuff.
hold the switch. Okay, uh, this switch right there works somehow for a jam pellet. It says in the instructions. I just want to see which way you put the rotary mag in. You can buy those rotary magazines in three packs from Crossman too, by the way. Okay. Put the pellets in from that side with the with the with the skirt facing you. See how that's hollow the little tube right there? That's the front that faces the front of the rifle. Okay. So then I guess this faces you. That's the side you put the pellets in from. Pesky varmint made off with 44 45 seconds of film there. I think I see him over there now. Uh, we'll just have to deal with him. Grab a cloud, varmint. Hand over that there tape. Oh well. Just reckon we'll have to make do. But that's it for now. We'll maybe shoot it again shoot it next time so good lord willing and the creeks don't rise we'll see you again right back here